Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monica and today on Guru Grit we're going to be discussing remote seduction. I made a couple of TikTok videos about this and I said I'd make a YouTube video to follow up with more detail. That's what I'm doing. I'm in my little park. It's a beautiful Saturday as usual. The only time I have time to film these days. So um, because I've been back consecutively on I think three or four Saturdays in a row now, I've made some new friends, so they're very impressed with me. My little, I make uh, friends with elders for some reason wherever I go. When I was um, swimming laps in the mornings at the gym, pre-lockdown, all my friends were like in their 80s. So uh, they're very impressed that I'm on the internet and they, they might come say hi. So if you see a special cast of characters um, coming to say hello, then just let, let you know to anticipate that. I hope someday they do. I think that would be really, really fun. Um, in any case, let's get to, maybe we'll remotely seduce them to do that for us and come say hi to everybody. So remote seduction, oh God, what is it? Well, most importantly, what isn't it? It's pretty much everywhere. It's in effect all of the time. Um, it's in effect right now. It's in effect even when you don't think it's in effect. That's how seduction works. So basically, first I'd like to start with the basics, which is uh, remote seduction. The name itself, I don't find so effective. I think it's alluring. I think it's mysterious and I think it does the job. People think, ooh, you can like do seductive things. It must be about love. Mm, it must be specific person. Mm, it must be... Uh, you know, like very 48 laws of power. It must be really Robert Greene. It can be, but I don't think so. I think seduction is simply the art of getting one's heart desires. That's it. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be a person. It doesn't have to have a romantic or sexual connotation. So why call it that? I don't know. Who started calling it that? I really don't know. And I don't think it matters. I'm someone who just cuts to the chase. I, I have a, a naturally, I'll say, discerning character so I just I'm turned off by people who just hype something up that doesn't have any real substance to it so why call it that and give it this sort of alluring hypnotic magnetism uh, and only channel it towards getting someone to maybe kiss you is a bit like silly you could <laughs> you could make worlds you can create worlds uh, if you wanted to so what you call it really doesn't matter to me I could care less I just know that it works and it's working all the time and if you don't work it it will work you I can tell you this is how the this is the nature of where we live you want to call it the universe the world if you have a really good sense of humor the simulation so either way eh doesn't really matter. But sim simply remote. Let's say remote is you do it, you get what you want out there from here. That's it. Uh, if we wanted to get really technical, maybe in the future I might, I would even do away with things like creation or manifestation. Because the moment that you want something, you're not actually creating it. It's already done. Just, be just because you wanted it, it's made itself ready. So you're really just allowing or receiving as Abraham talks about. So that's the first thing. So you, you bring it from out there to here. A really good teacher for this is Joe Dispenza. He says, you become the portal. You know, you become the vortex for all these things to flow in through to you. They come from out there here. And Neville Goddard says one of my favorite lines. I used to write it daily. He said, I make there here. I make then now. Okay. You bring it to yourself. That's the remote aspect and to seduce us to pull in to draw in okay so let's give some really clear examples of course everybody wants the technique it's the simplest thing ever it's everything pretty much Neville has ever taught I've talked about it I live it I do it okay you pick something you want you empty out your mind you visualize it you infuse it with emotion and then you drop it and let it go we'll get more into that as we get deeper but for now, let's just discuss some very practical elements. People might think, oh my God, it's so mysterious. How do you do it? I want this person to call me. I want this, I'm like, Liz Lemon, is this about a boy? That's how I feel sometimes. There's nothing wrong with it. You can have anything you want, but it's so much. So start with something small. So let's say you wanted to seduce a specific person. Seduce, okay. Um, but you wanted something else, okay? Everyone always says when manifesting, start with something small, like a cup of coffee. We'll start with those things and then work your way up, okay? So even though I live these things, um, there's always, there's a couple of things that I'm just like sort of stuck on that I find very, very hard. And I'm thankful for that because without challenges, you know, I'd be super bored. But everything else I could just manage very, very quickly. So start small, practice, and you flex it like a muscle. In a previous video I made, I want you to watch it called Psychic Abilities and Nature of the Universe. There's nothing personal about this. It's, the universe is simply impersonal, but psychic abilities are not a characteristic of spiritual evolution. Like you can just learn them, you know, like people who are just a, 
abhorrent, you know, just innately awful or morally bombed out and reprehensible. They can do it because they practice it like a skill, you know? So it's like saying only good people can go to the gym and get big muscles. Like, no, anybody who is willing to wake up early in the morning and go to the gym and snort protein powder, don't actually do that. That was a joke. I got my first TikTok violation today, so I was like, just because I said I would never date an Aquarius in that video, so I'm just like, can't even joke anymore on the internet. But, you know, you're going to get muscles if that's what you do. You, you adhere to a certain regimen. So remote seduction is much the same. If you adhere to it, you practice it, you'll see that it works. And I mentioned abhorrent individuals, so I'm not trying to cast judgment, but let's use a really good example. Look at the media. Look at the sort of culture of consumption that we live in here in the West where I am. Everything is seduction. Everything is marketed as seduction. Marketing is a massive illusion. It's smart and it works, but it's all remote seduction. So the reason why I sort of joke when someone's like, you want a girl to text you? Is that what you want? It's because you can do so much more than just have that. And I'm not saying that's not good enough or anything like that. I'm just saying, think about how many things in the world already operate with this method and mechanism and then you'll realize that literally anybody can do it. And not only can they do it with one person or one thing, you can have a mass hypnosis. So mass hypnosis is obviously, obviously a proven thing as we know mass hysteria, you know, like the Salem witch trials and the, what were they called? You know, the whole, the, uh, the inquisition, okay? So people can catch onto hysteria. Nerves are infectious, but so is joy. So basically, when something blows up and it's like a trend, you're like, oh, I really want one of those. I don't know if I need it, but I want it, <laughs> you know? So it's sort of like that. So ask yourself, next time you buy something, go, do I really want this? Is it just for the dopamine? Where did I even see it? Who's persuading me to do this? Ask yourself, okay? Is it advertisement? Is it word of mouth? As we know, like, the most influential way that information travels between mammals, and that includes us, is word of mouth. It's really, that's the most common way for someone to get married or get a job or purchase something is because they heard it from somebody else that they trust. So think of it that way. And then look at people in the media. So consider how many people are active right now that you would probably, had it not been for the hype, you would not consider particularly attractive, charming, talented, noteworthy, special, like utterly unremarkable. I don't mean that to be cold, but really they're just like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't, I don't know why everyone likes this person. It's like, what's great about them? And if you say that, you know, people go mental because they're all under this mass seductive quality of that individual. So another one is the news, you know, the power of narrative. So let's take the example of a really good person or so we're told they're a very good person. Now, there's people in the media alive today that we're told are, you know, America's sweetheart and they always star in these, um, hero roles and they they're sweet and they're harmless and they never say the wrong thing and they never do the wrong thing and they are always in the best movies or something like that they're just well loved by everyone okay it's like oh i love him he's the best he's so lovely remember him in this he's an icon he's been around since i was like blah 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 years old how could they ever do anything awful i don't believe that that's a rumor how could that good person do such a thing it's the power of narrative and you could switch it around. You could say, oh, this pop star, he's the hero, he's from my childhood, I believe them, I love them, I trust them, this and this and that. And then a bunch of negative narrative comes out and you're like, oh my God, none of that was true because this narrative is so convincing. So how can you really distinguish between what is and what isn't? Well, you can, because you could, if you have your intuition switched on really, really high, very easy to do. But that's the whole point, is you're seduced to pick a side Okay, so you can do that as well. You know, first and foremost, start with yourself. Say, I'm going to only believe what I believe from now on. So how do I know what to believe? You throw thinking out the window because I'll be honest with you, there's nothing inherently rational about living here. This is an irrational place and rational people will lose, okay? You have to be a little bit unreasonable. You have to, I wish we were all a little bit more like Pisces in nature, which I find very hard to um, accept, but I've had to. Being uh, illogical and unreasonable from time to time and simply relying on feeling and realizing that's where your power lies helps you move forward. So how do you seduce something? Ooh, I'm gonna make a separate video on hypnosis and why it works, but effectively you would Start with yourself. So here's what I mean. 
you don't actually call someone and tell them, like, look into my eyes, look deep into my eyes. Like, no, you creep. Like, I have, no, like, oh, actually, hypnotists I like, but magicians tend to creep me out, 90% of them. Some of them are truly, truly amazing. But I just remember this kid in middle school who liked magic for fun, and he was just inherently unlikable, and I won't say his name, I remember him very, very well. And this is the craziest thing. I was 11 years old, I'll never forget this. For show and tell, he brought his pet rat to school and they literally looked alike. You know how sometimes people look like their pets? The rat was really nice, I don't know why the guy wasn't, but it's not like that. You're not gonna start being like, check behind your ear, and look, you know, and just start doing creepy things to somebody. That's not the point, you're not trying to like, perform your grand prestige and let them know about it. It's usually when it doesn't work. I manifest things for other people all the time. The key is not to tell them. Never tell them that you're doing it. But only good things, of course, like job opportunities or a crush or something like that. Something that they want, buying a new car, moving, etc. okay? So here's what you do. You pick the object of your desire, a job, an interview, finding money on the ground, good weather, okay? Uh, whatever, I don't care. It could be anything, having long eyelashes, just anything. It does, it does not matter. It doesn't have to be important. I think when you make it important, it kind of makes you feel stuck because you're like, oh, well, if it doesn't come, then I'm a bad person. If it doesn't come, I did it wrong. No, no, no. Pick anything that you, uh, uh, Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas, you get the wishbone, okay? Who cares? Anything. Pick anything. And then you will make that thing come to you. So you're going to have some dialogue with yourself. That's the first person you're going to seduce. So it helps to re- Release the grip of the ego and what it has over you. Okay, so that's where you start. Otherwise, all you do is project like a very needy energy and everything can hear you in existence. Okay, so money can hear you. You pair of shoes can hear you. A sale rack can hear you. You can't come to those things from that place of unworthiness. Truly, self-worth is like the key to having everything you want. Look at so many celebrities. I was just talking about average people. In my generation, honestly, I'm not trying to be like shady, but very few people have true star quality and star power. I look at like the old icons of like Hollywood or something. I was like, oh my God, they were like magnetic and dynamic and larger than life. Very, very few people are like that these days, but they do have one thing in common. A lot of them have a godhood, a sense of like godliness. They just feel, it's not even arrogance. They like inherently on a cellular, cellular level just believe that they're worth everything they have and they can have more, but you can do that. It costs absolutely nothing. It's absolutely free. It takes like five minutes a day, every day. Just talk yourself up, okay? Louise Hay is great. She taught mirror work. If you wanna do that, do it. You wanna listen to Neville Goddard who talks about being the opera power? Do that, okay? But you are like the battery that charges the dream, that charges the imagination. So you have to believe in yourself to get what you want. Again, start with something that doesn't hurt your feelings. Pick a pair of shoes, sing. I used to do this all the time when I started, I thought, I love Huskies. I want to see a Husky in the park. I want to see a dog in the park today. Uh, even if I'm not in the park, I want to walk down the street where usually dog walkers don't go, like maybe downtown where it's all concrete. I want to see a Husky, you know? And then I would start to see Huskies everywhere and I thought, okay, great. Now we can turn it up a little. I, I just want to turn it up a little. I want to go to a, a restaurant I've never been to before and the special for that day is going to be something I like, okay? I don't know, lentil and walnut soup or whatever, okay? Something weird. But start small and work your way up. And as you flex that muscle, you'll see that it actually begins to work. I promise you, you can't fail. It's impossible. So you have nothing to lose. So if you put yourself in a state of calm and relaxation, think about that thing from a nice, relaxed state, and then allow it to come to your reality. I will make a part two about this on how to turn up that technique. It's quite seductive. It's quite, you know, alluring or amped up and maybe not necessarily um, something that's easy to jump into if you haven't been practicing, though anything is possible, so I shouldn't say that. But stay tuned for part two. Um, I'll talk more about this. And until then, thank you for being here. I have many more videos. Go check those out. Go watch me on TikTok. Go read my articles. Email me if you have questions. And I'm still finishing Edgar Casey's Sex and the Spiritual Path. Fascinating book. So yeah, I'll keep you posted every Saturday as best I can, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have a very beautiful rest of the day. Bye-bye.